Okay, people, so, yeah, I was wondering what to watch, and I figured I would check out Dating and New York, right? The new joint on Prime Video, you know? It is um, written and directed by Jonah Beingold. Uh, it's his directorial debut as well, his feature debut, you know what I mean? Uh, the film is produced by um, Feingold and Jackie Akrich. Um, is executive produced by Jacoby Young-White. Sam Weinstein, Craig Swindler, Francesca Real, Mason Novick, Matthew Lev, Tracy Kopolowski, uh, Jerry Ferreira, Spencer Barkoff, co-produced by Kieran Altman, and Katie Schiller. I mean, I kind of feel a lot of those co-produced must be, right, credit-based. Because, yeah, that's a lot of people to have up on a joint. You know what I mean? Um, music is from Grant Fonda. Cinematography is Maria Rushk. It's edited by Hannah Park. Casting is Chelsea ellis Butch. And Marisol Ronkelly. Okay, so the production design is Michelle Lee. Um, makeup is Alina Gantz and Lily Lee. Uh, production management is Jeremy Trong. Um, and our cast, well, Interestingly enough, people, I mean, now you might go, no, that's not that interesting. But, right, Francesca Real, who is in one of our other films this week as a bit player, she's one of the leads. She plays Wendy Brinkley. Um, opposite Milo Marx, who is played by Jacoby Young White. Now, Milo's best friend is Hank Kadner played by Brian Muller, and Wendy's best friend is Jesse Katz, played by Catherine Cohen. Right, we've also got Olivia, played by Taylor Hill. Um, there is... Um, so Jesse sees... Uh, dot, uh, the, the Shrink... Dr. Lura True, played by Deborah Offner. Um, now, Fine Gold also plays one of uh, Wendy's dates in the film, Mort. Um, we got Sandra Sandra James as a real estate agent. Uh, Got Bradley, another of Wendy's exes, played by Arturo Castro, who uh, is in. Um... Huh. I cannot think of that fucking. It's the two girls, right? It's, it's that show with the two girls living in New York. Ah. Oh my days! I cannot think of what that what that is. It went for a few seasons. It, it was a lot of fun. It got a little political in places when they had that episode with Hillary Clinton that seemed very weird, right? But he's a he was a gay friend in that. I cannot. Yeah. Oh, can't think of what the show is. Called. That's fucking irritating. Jesus Christ, my memory is horrendous. Right, we've got Trent, another of um, Wendy's boyfriends, who's played by Max Moffat. There's Jenna, 
one of um, Milo's exes. She's played by Eva Victoria. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Who else have we got? Okay, so there's a doorman, right? Um, who is, well, he doesn't really get, I feel he did have a name. I think they did call him Jerry in it, right? And he's played by Jerry Ferreira. He's also the narrator of the whole joint. And I was like, I, I swear I recognise that dude from somewhere. He played Turtle in Entourage. Yes. I didn't really watch Entourage, but I watched it a few times. So I was like, I recognise that dude. Who the fuck is that dude? And yeah, that's who it is. That's who it is, people. <laughs> okay, so um, now, what is this film about? You ask. Yeah, you did. Stop lying. You know you asked that question. Well, I will tell you. Two dating app matched New York millennials draw up a best friend with benefits contract. What could possibly go wrong? Right? Which, I mean, as soon as you hear that, you kind of know the film. Right? I guess you kind of know the film after learning that. You know? And yeah, it is that. It is that. We, we have the, you know, it's just, you know, they, they play the whole intro of, like, millennials, New York, dating, dating apps and going through different apps and all of that. Now, we know what the apps are. <laughs> no, they like, essentially what we got, uh, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, eHarmony, GoCupid? Is that still a fit one? Hmm. But yeah, they're the, they're the big ones. Now, you've got the offshoots. Like, I think there's I swear there was one coffee and bagel, right? And then you've got, you know, Jewish ones and, you know, like, ni like niche ones like that. I do believe uh, hearing about one for farmers, right? So there's these niche ones, but, the, you know, the main ones are those, right? But we, we in stuff like this, they always try and reinvent the wheel and come up with really some names for apps. I mean, to be fair, the apps that we do have have dumb names. So, you know, but yeah, so we get walked through all of this and, you know, we meet these characters at a bar, having a, having conversations and all of that. And Milo's talking to Wendy and she mentions she's got a boyfriend and he just gets up and walks off. Right? She's talking to his friend Hank who's talking to uh, Jesse, and turns out Jesse's friends with Wendy, obviously, and then we get this, you know, very verbose conversation, right, which, you know, basically is the film, you know, there's a, there's a lot of these conversations which you think normal people do not have, right, don't talk like this, but obviously in something like this, Everyone talks like this, and it's so in a way it's aware of what it is, but then in that context, it, it feels like it's trying to go, <laughs> Yeah, I'm letting you into a little secret here, people. You know, what I mean, you think think this, but we're we're gonna take you under the hood of what dating is, what relationships are. <laughs> we are smarter than the average bear. Like, that's what it feels like it's trying to do a lot of the time. Which, I mean, right? That can be fine. But there, there, like, there's a, there's a balancing act here. Right? There's a balancing act. This doesn't why kind of feel it doesn't quite make it work. 
you know it's it's not terrible or anything but i think when you've got films like link i know right i talk about them a lot but link later's before trilogy right i people if you haven't seen those films i say it all the time but you need to see those fucking films they're incredible right they're incredible and it's just the way they're written because it feels real right they're dealing with real kind of things that you face in a relationship not the overblown false kind of elements that they throw into a film like this and they go look ah, this is a thing ah they're gonna lose their minds over this and you're just like ah i mean maybe some people do you know, maybe some people do, I will, to be fair. But it's not the norm. Like, we don't need to make this the norm, people. Come on. What are we doing? What are we doing? So that's the thing. And then, um, again, I talk about it a lot in Search of a Midnight Kiss, yo. Search of a Midnight Kiss. It's, oh, I love that. It's awesome. Right, you've even got things like Eternal Sunshine for the Spotlight Nine, which is a little esoteric, but you know, it's still right, more realistic conversations. Right? So you so you have that, and you've got the thing with the doorman, which like they want to break the fourth wall a lot in this. And there is a bit where the doorman says a thing, and you'll just be like, but what's the purpose of that? Right? It's very weird. But you could understand if it's being said to then create a situation. But it's not. And you're like, okay. But why? You know what I mean? It didn't really make any sense. Right? There's other things as well. There's a bit when Hank's looking at an apartment. And... Then he asks, and this isn't a spoiler, so don't worry, but he asks Jesse to move in with him. And she's like, ah, oh, this part is so small. It's like, uh, it's not the best. Bum, bum, bum. Now, she agrees to move in with him, and they take the apartment. And you're kind of like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. If you're going to live, now your disposable income has increased. So technically, you could find a better apartment, a bigger apartment, right? That was, made no sense, right? That whole thing made no sense. Because I'm just like, you're there with the real estate inch. You know, if he had asked her to move in, like, later on that evening in a bar, boom, you'd be like, okay, fine. But when you're there in the flat, the real estate agent's there. You've, you've agreed. You're like, oh, we've now got more money. <laughs> we could find something better, right? It, it's just, yeah, one of those odd kind of elements. In, like, there's a bit with, I do believe it's this, and I'm not making this up, right? Or it's just you know, I'm mixing up my films. But there's a, with, with the, um, what's it with this? No, 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 it wasn't with this film. I'm bad. I was gonna say something, it was with a different film. <laughs> Yo, it's not happens when you watch too many things and your memory is shit. Like sometimes you just mix things up. Woo! <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot, bro. Woo! Anyway, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. Um, the characters aren't very likable. I'll say that, right? Because you've got, like, Milo, who's ghosting chicks on the reg, right? But then it's all about, oh, but I want real love and blah, 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 but not giving other people an opportunity or a chance. And then, you know, when he's doing similar shit. And so I, I don't think you really like these characters. Now, I'm not saying you have to like a character to be able to emphasize or get into a story. But it was just, yeah, both. Not the most likable, 
right? But it was kind of weird because the way we introduced Milo, they then try and change the narrative later, it feels, right? Going, oh, he's a dreamer just looking for love. And it's just like, hmm, earlier on, I thought he was kind of being sold as a bit of a, you know what I mean? Ah, one night sand. I'm not, nothing serious. I'm a bit of a, you know what I mean? Like the whole, oh, I want something serious, but eh, do you really write one of those? Yeah, but I will say, right, it, it, it's Homie's first film, right? His first feature film. Um, and there is definitely some promise here. I mean, he does need to cut out having music to try and sell emotions because, look, we've seen it where it works. Right, you know, stuff like Franklin Top Gun Maverick, and like we've seen it when it works, but a lot of times in these romantic comedies, you know, it, it feels rather forced, right? And and yeah, that's what felt a little forced, right? So, work on that, you know, some dialogue and all of that, but you know, any structure was there and everything like that, so there is promise for sure. So, we'll see what Jonah does in the future but for now people dating and new york is available on prime video right apple is on apple um yeah you know it's out there so if it sounds like your kind of jam you know what i mean if you if you like something like wedding season plus one you know go long weekend which i feel do this slightly better but if you like those films then i think dating in new york will uh, speak to you right i think you'll vibe with it so there you go people it's up now